Hey everyone, I'm Brooke and welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about what's on my iPad. The apps I use on my iPad, the way I have my iPad set up and why I have it set up that way, and basically what I use my iPad for daily. So starting off with the iPad itself. So I have the 11 inch iPad Pro with the M4 chip. So this came out earlier this year in 2024 and I love it. I pretty much got the base model. So I have it in silver 256 gigabytes with the standard glass and you might already be able to tell, but I did also pick up the new accessories with it. So this is the new Pencil Pro and the case is the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad. Now, for some context, what I use my iPad for usually falls into one of two buckets. So the first bucket is just browsing and consumption, basically using it as a tablet, as a bigger version of my phone. And then on the other side of things, I will use it as my productivity device. So I'll answer emails, I'll take notes, I'll write my scripts for these YouTube videos. Now, with that in mind, my setup philosophy, let's call it, for my iPad is similar to my setup philosophy for my iPhone in that they are intentional and minimal because I'm trying to limit distractions. Okay, so this is my iPad home screen and you'll see the top half is pretty much all widgets. The bottom half is all the apps I'm using most frequently and that's it. If I swipe, there's no more pages of apps. It just brings me to the app library. So what is on this home screen was very, very intentionally chosen and it's really geared for the apps I'm using most frequently when I go into my iPad to limit those distractions, <laughs> like I mentioned. And then also the information that I want to access quickly or just see quickly at a glance. And then anytime I do wanna pull up an app that isn't on my home screen, I'll just use the search or the spotlight feature by pulling down in the middle of my screen and searching for that app. So at the top, my widgets and stacks. Reminders top left, that's something I wanna be able to see at a glance. I don't wanna have to click five times to access. So putting the information front and center keeps it front of mind. Then below that, I have all the quick links to my most recent notes. So most of the time it is scripts I'm working on so I can quickly just click on the script and pull it up immediately. Again, as opposed to finding the notes app, searching through a whole bunch of notes to find the specific one I'm looking for. And then this is a stack. So when I swipe down, it brings me to my Notion dashboard, which is basically I call Life OS and it just has my planner, things that are coming up. And again, just information quickly at a glance and well organized so that I'm not getting lost and distracted. The rest pretty much self-explanatory, I would say. So weather, deliveries, and then my calendar. And probably half of these widgets are stacks. So things that are grouped together pretty much like notes and notion, reminders and family calendar. So it's a different calendar than the one I see with my like daily planner. Uh, and then weather and I'll do screen time because those are things I don't always go looking for. They're not the information that I want to see front and center, but when I do want to quickly glance, that's how I can do it. Another place I like to hide widgets is in the today view. So if you swipe from left to right, I'll have a more detailed look at like the weekly weather, calendar overview or like a monthly overview, battery, and then some news headlights. And if you're new to widgets and want to set them up, what you would basically do is hold on your screen until everything starts jiggling at you. And then in the top left, you'll see a plus button. You'll see all of the available widgets on the left. And there's often different sizes of widgets for each one. So you can just swipe through and pick the one you want to see. And then the smart stack is at the top. You would again, pick the size you want, and then you would select which widgets or which of the individual apps you want as part of the smart stack collection. And then the apps at the bottom are very limited to the apps I'm pretty much using daily or I want to remember to use. And you might be wondering how I can claim that this is like a distraction free or minimalist device when I have Instagram and Twitter. Yes, I'm still gonna call it Twitter front and center. But there's, there's a method to my madness on this. So my Instagram and Twitter are only my Brooke Tierney account. So like my work accounts, if that makes sense. So there's no doom scrolling. When I am on these apps, it's very curated content. 
to YouTube videos, to tech, to other creators that I follow and get inspiration from. So that's why when I'm on here, when I'm on these social media apps, it's pretty much for work purposes only. Settings and photos, I just like to have handy because I go into them fairly frequently. Safari for browsing, online shopping on Amazon. I just, I, yeah, that's just, it's a staple. I unfortunately online shop way too much. Uh, navigation, I'm usually a Google Maps person, but I'm really trying to use Apple Maps and comparing the two. So that's why I have them both there. But whenever I'm planning trips and saving things for future trips, I'm using Google Maps most of the time. And then YouTube, of course, to be able to watch my videos and other videos. YouTube Studio so I can check the video analytics and see how my videos are doing. So please like, comment, and subscribe on this video so that it does really well. Just kidding, but I'd appreciate it. So thank you if you do. Um, then the photo apps I'm using, so Canva and Lightroom usually to edit photos and then make my thumbnails. Final Cut Pro, because as I mentioned, I'm trying to use that more. So I'm putting it front and center so I see it and remember to use it. Uh, and then the rest I feel like is pretty self-explanatory, but messages, personal email, work email, music, and news. That's just, yeah, those are pretty much what I'm using every day on my iPad. And then as I said earlier, like if there's anything that's not here that I'm looking for, I would pull down and use the search function. Or if I do swipe over to the app library, they are automatically placed into these categories or into these folders. So. Sometimes I wish I could change the name of a category or the name of um, one of these groupings, but honestly, it's pretty good. So if there is ever an app I'm looking for, I can quickly just kind of see them here. You can also click into the app library to see all of your apps downloaded on your iPad alphabetically. So basically between all of these options, it's very easy to find the app I'm looking for. So I hope this video at least inspires you to take a look at your own devices, whether it's your iPad or your iPhone. Is there anything you can kind of clean up, any clutter to get rid of, anything you can organize and just make a little bit more intentional for yourself so that it is less distracting, so it's quicker to do what you want to do and you're just overall more productive when you're on your devices. Thanks for watching. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already so that you don't miss any future tips and tricks. And that's it. So have a great day.